Welcome to the Lancashire Lad Podcast. Welcome to the Lancashire Lab podcast and this week I have got a fantastic guest on the show. You may have seen him plastered all over social media over the last seven to eight years. It is of course the Wellstone Raider, it's Gordon Hill. Gordon, how are you? Are you okay? Not bad mate, not bad Stuart. Yeah, all right, all right mate, yeah, good. Well, th- first of all, thank you for uh, donating some of your busy time to me and uh and hopefully we'll have a really good chat about um, about your journey over the last, well, we'll say 10 years, really. Um, and, yeah, show people a different side to you, I guess. All right, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. It's my privilege to be on your side. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Gordon, let's, I'll tell you what, you probably predicted this yourself, but let's go back to the start, which was 2013, um, a football match. Uh, between Whitehawk and Wellstone. Um, Wellstone, yeah. Wellstone, sorry, yes. And what, tell us, obviously the video that went out onto onto the internet was, uh, I think you'd maybe had a few pints, uh, but obviously... More than a few. More, more than, than a few. few yeah. so That's tell, what football's all about, isn't it? It is. You tell us what happened that day then. Right, my mate is a bus driver. He's phoned me up, he's got the day off. Do I fancy down to Brighton and watch some mighty stones? <laughs> yes. This was eight o'clock in the morning. So get dressed, meet him about half past nine, have a few berries, get to Brighton, have more than a few more berries, <laughs> go to a football match where I've drunk the dope at a bar, these two idiots. But one of them turned around, I've got the beer in my hand, pushed me. Not pushed, didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. So we had a little thing on, right? Anyway, they followed me out. Next thing I know, I've got these two blokes giving me GBH of the ear hole. All oh, right, okay. I had it for about 20 minutes, half hour. And in the end, even you, Stuart, you seem like a really, really nice bloke. If you've got someone in your, or two people in your ear hole, Giving you abuse. Yeah. It, it's an attorney. Everybody's an attorney. In the end, I just give him the famous uh, Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was crazy because I remember, I, 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 I remember like the rough period. I was just sat at home and my phone bleeped and my friend said, have you seen this? And I, I obviously clicked onto the video and seen it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it, it blew up, didn't it? I mean, what was... What was your indication of when that started blowing up on, on online? Uh, it didn't blow up for, it stopped, it stalled for of about 200,000 for months and months and months. And then, oh, but I didn't bother yetting it. I thought, yeah, I've got away with this. <laughs> 200,000. <laughs> yeah, 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 that is my new of the population. I've got away with this. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I was looking at Facebook. These names or vibes, whatever they call, <laughs> came up, had me on it all the time. And all of a sudden, the video's done. I've looked at the video. It's gone from 200,000 to about 5 million. <laughs> and I thought, like, oh, my God. Yeah. Then it stalled again. And all I right. thought, oh, here we go. Um, I, a few people might recognise me. I, I've got semi away with it. And then all of a sudden, it just went boom, 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 up to a th- about 30 million views. And, I've, and then there's no getting away with it. <laughs> yeah. So when, when that happened, were you, was the first sort of feelings of worry or was it like, did you find it funny or did you think to yourself? I was terrified. You were terrified, yeah? Yeah. Were you worried about, were you working for yourself at the time or were you working for a company? Uh, I was subcontracting off a company. Right, so were you worried about how it would affect your job and things like that? Or was that... Yeah, you know what, my main worry was whether, how it would affect me down to, down to Wolfstone. 
Ah, I was more yeah. worried about being barred from Wolfstone. Yeah. And I was about using my job. <laughs> That's the beauty you of football, isn't it? You know when you get another it? job, you, you can't get another football team. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Is is that, I take it that's you've been a lifelong fan of Wellstone since nineteen seventy eight. Wow, and that and that's I still good. remember my first game. Yeah, w what score was it? It was two 0 to Sampdoria in the Intercity Cup. Bloody hell! So you've been a massive is so there's no other team for you. You don't support anyone in the Premier. I was at or... one time an Arsenal supporter. Right. But then the Premier League took over and it became a business, not a football team. It's the same as all Premier League. I don't think it's a football team. They're football teams anymore. They're businesses. Yeah. So I, I think with non-league or lower league teams, you mean something. You, uh, the actual fans, I know they do at Wolfstone and I'm pretty sure they do at all non-league clubs. The fans are the actual, the people that matter. Yeah. In in the Premier League and it's, it's getting to some Northern, uh, some Division 1 and 2 teams. It's, they're not about the fans anymore. It's about a business. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a brand, not a, not a football. No, do you know, I understand that because uh, I, I, as to our prior chat via text, I'm from Morecambe. Um, and Morecambe just got promoted from League Two to League One. Uh, Congratulations! Last yeah. Congratulations. No, thank you very much. So, um, a lot of a lot of the local area, I think, it was about sixteen coaches all went down to Wembley. You know what I mean? And the buzz in the town was really, really big for it. So, I do get what you're saying about the local league side of things. It's um, and local teams. It's uh, it has a different kind of allegiance, doesn't it? To uh, to what you know that's different from the Premiership. You, you were talking about 16 coaches and half of them people never, they've never known each other. And now, Tuesday went on the coach with them. They know each other. They, they spent whatever time more than in London, two and a half hours, three hours. Yeah. On the coach. No, it was about six coach. hours. <laughs> and then now, because of your promotion, how many six hours? About six hours from Morecambe to London. Bloody hell. That's why, if it was closer... That is proper, that is proper support, though, isn't it? That is proper yeah, support. Yeah, well, that's what... If I had... if I, I've just had twins, Gordon, but if I had more time, I'd have drove down to see you and do this in person, but... If you have said you were in Wembley, I'd have time up to see you. Ah, uh, but... Well, I didn't go. I didn't go, unfortunately. So, um... Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't admit to being a massive Morecambe fan. I've always been a Liverpool fan. Um, All right, put the phone down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> no, it is. So, Gordon, let's just go back to, obviously, when it blew up then. So, did did walking down the street become something of a of a, a an odd experience? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the oddest experience was... I was working away. I'm, I was feeling a skip up in South Oxley. <laughs> and I'm on top of this skip, trying to level everything out, touching the bloke I was working for as a tight ass, trying to get his money's worth out of the skip company. Yeah. So I'm on top of this skip, levering things out. And this this mini drove past. Anyway, it straight straight to a hope and it's too beautiful. And I'm talking about gorgeous young ladies came out asked me for a video and a photo. And I'm not the best yeti man in the world. That is when I realised something good is going to happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, so, yeah, so, yeah. I think, the I think you said yes. <laughs> I did say, do you want some? I'll give it to you, but they the, the declined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, mate, yes. So what, what opportunities has it led to? Because obviously when it first happened, as you said, you were petrified. But I guess... The feeling of feeling scared quickly turned into bloody hell, what's happening to me? This is kind of cool. What it has done, and the what I do appreciate it for, I've always done little charity events, little things for charities. Yeah. And before this, I've done little uh, fundraising things. But now, because of me being a Wolfstone Raider, I'm a patron of a charity called Life for a Kid. Uh, they're based in Hull, but they do a magnificent job. And I do a lot, lot, lot my single all made money for charity. I've done a lot of, I've been given a platform to do 
much more charity work than I could ever dream about, ever even think about. Yeah, and you seem very passionate about that as well. I do, I do. I, I love my charity work. I, it's. I tell you what, when I, like most people, I suffer. I suffer from anxiety and things like that. And then you look round. I go round hospice. I see out at Tidge. I've got a very good friend I used to visit in hospital when when the Wolfstone Murder first came out. I'm not going to mention his name, but you know who you are uh, if you're watching. And I went to visit him in hospital a couple of times, and I went around the whole ward. And it's such a when you see these kids and they're in hospital, but they're laughing, they're smiling, and and you think, are my are my problems all that bad? Yeah, my problems all that bad, and it makes you sit up, and it makes you notice, it makes you think, why am I worried about everyone on the, whether I'm going to be out for a beer this week? And then people you're in there, and them kids are laughing, joking, smiling, and they're in the hospital by all their mates, and they it doesn't it bothers them, but they they just get on with it, and then just it makes you it puts things in perspective. Puts you yeah, no, it. It's a, I agree with you. It's a fantastic way to look at things because, you know, we're all human beings and we all have days where we feel like, you know, where we feel like shit, shall we say, and, yeah. and things going on in our lives. But sometimes there's nothing more humbling than when you spend time with people that, that really do have it rough. And uh, obviously, you know, from what you're saying, you enjoy you enjoy that that sort of giving back to the community or giving back to what you can help. And at the same time, it makes you a better person because you're seeing these things that, you know, that upset you. I wouldn't say I enjoy it. It's, it's the thing that keeps me sane. Yeah. OK. And you think about it. I never have to be famous. You get these people that love I and they don't need these TV shows and they think it's all going to be champagne and red carpets. It ain't. It ain't. You get I've been knocked out. I had I was knocked out running for a bus. I had a bleed on the brain just because I was the Wolfstone Raider. So uh, was that someone who blindsided you? Yeah? Was that someone that just assaulted you in the street? Yeah, yes. I wrote I was running for a bus next thing I know. I woke up in an ambulance being rushed to hospital. Wow. I found out I had a bleed on the brain, which surprised me. I didn't even think I had a brain, but <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, bless I was overnight. They were worried about whether to do uh, a brain operation, but then they realised the brain is so small they wouldn't find it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, all jokes aside, all jokes yeah. aside, I laugh about things I shouldn't. But yeah. uh, it was a, that was a scary time. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Is would you say that the people? Would you say people in general? Would you say the nicer people outweigh the negative ones, or would you say it's 50, Oh, without 50? a doubt, I'd say, oh, out of 100 people, 99 people are absolutely brilliant. But the same as everything in life, not only if you're... I don't charge myself as a celebrity, I'm nowhere near. I'm, I must admit, I'm a public figure. People know me, so, yeah, I take that. But... Even in everyday life, you see people being evil to each other for no reason whatsoever, and it's not at all for, it's not nice. And just being in the public eye, you're more, I find yourself more of a target for that. Yeah. No, I, 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 can, I can imagine that what that's like and stuff um, to a certain degree. Is it, is it something that you enjoy? I mean, I know you, 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 were, you were reserved with the word celebrity then, um, et cetera, but is it something you enjoy being known? Uh, is it a nice feeling? Yes and no. Sometimes you just, you can't switch off. Sometimes you can be out with your mates and you be, people come up. I've been eating food and I'm not nodding and they don't know eating food. Can I have a photo? Can I have a photo? I'm not nodding. I love it. Which is what I started doing at the beginning. Yeah. When people ask for a photo, I say, yeah, have the photo. Would you donate to charity? For me, please. And as I said, nine out of ten people are so yeah, they'll, they'll put money in a charity box or they'll put money towards my life for a kid foundation. So that is a good side of it. But some you just can't switch off. People, you might be having a bad day. People that you people can't read your mind. You know, you'd be having a shitty, really shitty day, like you said. Yeah. People come up, but you can't you, you just gotta be you've always got to be smiling. And sometimes that's hard. Yeah, uh, no. you just got to do it. Being a public figure isn't all champagne and red carpets. Mm. Is it still as strong as it's as it as it was at the start? Are you still 
Oh, is it is it is 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 it right now at the height of it now or? Uh, I, it's not as bad. It's not as it was when it first started. I didn't know that. Nowadays, it isn't too bad. It's it's bearable. But can you imagine? I, I was, couldn't even walk down the street. Yeah, no, I can. I can imagine. Gordon, if I saw you. If I saw you, which I hope I will one day, I'd like to come down and meet you, maybe have a beer with you at some if point. I'll be, if I'll be at Morton soon, so I might come and see you. Oh, you're coming up to Morton? I might be too, yet. Oh, lovely. Well, we can go for a beer. But yeah. uh, no, but what I was trying to say is if I saw you, I'd come for a picture with you as well. It's you, you, you you're one of those, I think you were t- you're a proper British character. And British people like British characters, and and yeah, yeah, you know, and that and that's what it that's what it was. I think that's what was. I don't ever said. I don't get me wrong. I, I love people coming and asking for photos. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, if you can make someone happy, just please just make that little bit of it. It's a hard world out there, and just to make someone a photo. If someone wants a photo and it makes them happy, I'd do that twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is a hard road, especially with this COVID situation and people ill. You know, you've got to be nice to each other. It's just, just too much hatred. There's too much ugliness out there. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. Um, just while we're talking about Morecambe, obviously, I don't I don't know if you know, but Tyson Fury uh, lives in Morecambe. I know, I know, yeah. I've met him a couple of times. I've been fortunate to meet the gentleman a couple of times. Yes, I, I actually watched the video of you interrupting his press conference what was that like? What was that like for your nerves? Were you all uh, were you tense? And uh, have you uh, ever thought about jumping out of a plane without a parachute? <laughs> I can't say I have, but um, it's a similar. That's what you felt it? like. Yeah. I'm sitting there, and I thought, "What have you got yourself into now?" <laughs> but I'm in there. You can't bot me out there, can you? No, you can't. So, what was obviously when the cameras weren't rolling? I guess you had a chat with Tyson, did you? Did you have a brief? He is. Uh, I met him a couple of times since. Right. And he is absolutely brilliant. The man's amazing, mate. And yeah. he drives Paris. I tell you what, Paris wears the trousers in that episode, <laughs> mate. <laughs> he, he, listen, he, he'll beat Ryder up, but then he'll fight, he'll beat Anti Joshua, but he's no match for Paris, mate. Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> is she a strong-willed woman? She, uh, listen, she's brilliant. I, yeah. I, I, I was fortunate enough to spend about twenty minutes in her company. Right, a woman. I tell you what they say: behind every successful man is a strong woman, and that is definitely in that case. Oh, that's, that's that's great to hear. I've actually, uh, I've actually sent, uh, I've actually sent like a feeler out to, to interview Paris. So it'll be interesting to see if she comes back and uh, and agrees. But um she's a very private woman though. Yeah. If you do get an interview of her, you're very, very lucky. Not because she doesn't like publicity. She's very shy, believe it or not. Yeah. You don't often see her in the papers, do you? You don't often see her doing interviews. No, no, you, you're quite correct. I think her first job and, and what she loves doing is obviously being there for the family and raising the kids. And Oh, she's a great mother and all. She yeah. Is. No, no, it's cool that you've uh, you've met Tyson a few times and got on with him. Which of us... I tell you what, can I ask you... I'll ask you two questions in one. Which is the nicest celebrity you've ever met and which is the one that disappointed you the most? Uh, right. The, the, the nicest one I ever met... Tyson's up there. He is definitely up there. Yeah. But I'd say, as when I was growing up, Wilden Banks was my hero, and, and Paul Dashlund. I'd say the, the boat. I'd say Paul Dashlund. It, it's it's uh, 50 50 Paul Dashlund or Jordan Banks. And they're the nicest people you've ever met. Jordan Banks had me actually. I was actually in full. I, I was in awe of him. I was sitting there. I was doing a radio, radio thing, presentation award in uh, Stoke, yeah. uh, radio, BBC Radio Three Counties. And uh, I'm sitting there listening to Dawn the Bank stories. And he's a big man. He's about six foot two, six foot three. He just looked down at me and went, Mr. Raider, I do believe they've just told your name to go on stage. <laughs> there I was, so enfold with him, just listening to him. Yeah. I forgot that what I was there for. Mr. Raider, I love it. <laughs> Mr. Raider, that's awesome. And I was fortunate 
enough to make uh, Gaza Podestoy. Yeah. Uh, what, a, what a diamond is or is. Um, I, I went to one of his meeting joints to a friend, a Russian journeys friend of mine there. And uh, when he see me, he just like, after I, when he had the interview, we were just sitting there listening to him, talking to him, and like me and you were talking now. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems it seems like I think I think we're talking about arguably the most talented British footballer, well English footballer. I'm not sorry. that good. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think with Gaza, we're probably talking about probably the most talented English footballer of all time. I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it was something special. And who's who? Which celebrities have you met that you left thinking they're yeah, a bit of a wanker? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, believe it or not, so, uh, some of the reality TV shows people, like Tower, it's like the Towery people, uh, I don't want to mention their names, so I don't want to... No, that, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. You can tell, you, you can tell that you're seasoned Scotty in this T, arena if now. If Scotty T's watching, you're a prick. Who? Scotty T from, uh, what's it called? Oh, Jordy uh, Shaw. Yeah, Scotty T, if you're watching, you're a total prick. <laughs> Do you reckon we can organise a charity boxing fight? <laughs> the Raider it's a big versus Scotty I, I don't think I'll say it to his face. But, <laughs> but there again, I did get him kicked out the, uh, the, uh, the VIP area in, uh, what's it called? Newcastle. Why? What did he do to you? Oh, he just annoyed me. I was doing a meet and do it up there. And it is, it, it, when he does meet and do it, he will only photograph with women. Will he? Yeah. Right. And I was there, he was just there as a punter, and he goes there all the time when he's not filming. It'd be like me down into my local, and everybody knows me. I'm just a normal, everyday person. I'm, they've known me before I was the Raider, and since I'm the Raider. I hope it ain't changed me. If it has changed me, I hope it's for the better. Yeah, I yeah. can't say, because I can't judge myself. But he was, I was there, people were tearing up to have photos. He came storming in the area, pushed me out the way to Jeff too. I didn't even know who he was. Right. So he so pushed you out of the way, did he? Right. He pushed you out of the way? Yeah. So he, and I've, I've got him ticked out the uh, VIP area, so he's turned steaming in, ripped his T-shirt off, turned steaming up. What a total arrogant prick. <laughs> Well, uh, do you know something? It's good. I like, I like asking questions like that because it shows people that these, sometimes these reality stars, because some of them, I've met some of them, and some of them are lovely, but some of them sometimes just have the wrong, I guess it's like any celebrity, just have the wrong approach. Yeah, so right, I'm going to ask you the same question now. Yeah. Who's the most, what's the best celebrity you've met, and what's, who's the most worst? Come on. Right. Tell you stay puppy now. No, that's fair enough. So the, the nicest celebrity I've met is between Ricky Hatton... Oh, yeah. And um, Alicia Dixon. I've met her, yeah. She's, yeah, um... she was absolutely... I, I work as a singer as well, Gordon. I, I perform sometimes. So I performed at Morgan Carnival when she was on the bill and it was raining. And after it had finished, she stayed outside in it for about 40 minutes signing autographs, getting piss wet through, um, which I thought was quite impressive. And the worst... Probably Gabrielle. Oh, okay. What the singer? Uh, yeah, she was just very rude, and uh, the people that I worked with that booked her, uh, yeah. she she gave them a very hard time about accommodation. Uh, refused to sort of stay in the accommodation he booked, and just literally. And when she'd finished, she just went from stage to car to gone. There was no yeah, time. Nice. Yeah, so yeah, so Ricky Hatton, Alicia Dixon, probably the nicest two I've met yeah. and talked to. And yeah, Gabrielle would probably be the one that was yeah, probably yeah, a bit office, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that's pretty much it. So God, what what are you do what do you do for at the minute for for a job then? I work in a warehouse in uh did I mention the firm's name? Yeah, no, well we, we I work for firm. Orbital fasteners, we do nuts, bolts, screws, power tools. Uh, it's hard work, but it's a great, and it's a great, we've got a great bunch of lads there. Yeah. yeah. We have a laugh, we work hard. Our manager's 
all right, he's not a bad chap. I hope he's not watching, so I don't want to be asked. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, yes. Do you have to work, Gordon, or is it a choice? Do you, do have, you, have, do you, do you have money saved up from the from when it blew up? Or What I'm trying to say is, no, what I'm trying no, no, to say... No. I've made a tap. I'm, I'm not going to say... I've made some money. Yeah. I've just enough money to live on. Most, right. most of the money I've made on the charity. Right. That's, that's very admirable. That's <laughs> very admirable. I just wondered if you working full-time... Doing that job was a choice. Yeah, me. If I had money, I wouldn't be working for time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. I tell you what, you're so down to earth, Gordon. Honestly, I'm really enjoying this chat. Um, you, you've got your head screwed on so much. Don't worry, don't worry. Thanks for saying that. The map, the checks in the post. <laughs> it's all right, mate. It's all right. So um, let me get let me get this uh, question for you. So um, oh, that was it. So. You are are you still are you still associated with Great Ormond Street or is it still something that you're passionate about? I'm still passionate about it. Yeah. But I love the, the the hospital were absolutely amazing when I was under. Yeah. Uh I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for Great Ormond Street Hospital. But the thing I don't I've given it I'm this, I start doing it for uh local charities, not local, smaller charities because when you give money to a charity, you don't expect it to go to uh, CEOs uh, and staff. There's a CEO at uh, Great uh, Ormond Street on 360 grand a year. Yeah. So I don't give the charity money for him. I give them £36,000. That was a month's wages for him. So sorry, yeah. I won't even do that. So I do it, especially now. Uh, the local charities, the local, I've got, I'm gotten involved in another charity at the moment. It's called the W, I think it's WC, Whitmansworth, Stottage Farm, Wildlife Fund. Yeah. To, what they do is they, they get uh, injured and dis, distressed animals, bring them back to life and rehabilitate them and we, we set them back in the wild. And it's an amazing charity, so I'm hoping to do more work for them. I think it's brilliant how you clearly thought out who you want to raise money for and you have a very set sort of mannerism. I think your charity giving is very similar to your stance on football. You'd rather make a difference and be a fan where you're appreciated and it can be felt. And I think that sounds as similar with the charity work. Is that Would you say that's correct? Yeah, yeah, you've, I think you've explained it. You've explained it better than I did. Yeah, I think you've got that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to be my PA? Yeah, I, hey, Gordon. I mean, we, we, I'd love to work with you. You know, whenever we can. So uh, I'm sure we'll keep in touch because, of course, I've got I've got your phone number. Hey, that's a question for you. I tried to ring you and uh, it went to answer phone, and it said you came up and you say. You say hi. What well, it what? is, it stops the haters. Right. The abusive, I, you, you wouldn't believe the abusive message. You did. It, I just trying to touch them back on just how evil people can be. You don't believe some of the messages I've got. I would, I'll tell you what, this is a family, so I wouldn't want to repeat them. But so that's just, at one time, the police were, I had to have the police monitor in my tools. Right. Just, just so I can tell the viewers. So Gordon's answer phone message on his phone says, um, hi, this is Gordon. Every message that is left is forwarded to the police. I have to let you know that by law. Yeah. Uh, so that's what he's obviously saying now, but it caught me yeah. off guard a little bit. I was like, oh. That's, you know. that's what it's going to be, because that's what I normally say. I'm not, I should have told you to leave a message if I know the name. So now you put your name on the message, it's screw it. Yeah. Your name comes up on my phone. Right. So I know it's you. Right, got you. Got you. Right. So you. So you went through a period of getting some horrible messages. Oh, you wouldn't believe some of the evil that people send me. Was it was it mainly males? You get, yeah, mostly males, yeah. My brother passed away about four or five years ago. And my brother was, not only my brother, he was my best mate. We used to run about uh, after work at night. Sometimes we worked together. And exactly, I was doing uh, a nightclub appearance in Oxford and I was waiting for uh, someone to pick me up so I've got a message I've got a phone call I answered the phone it was exactly a year to at a day my brother passed away oh we're yetting for uh, they said my brother's address we've been yetting for him for the last year 
We've, he's run away without paying his fare. He's run away. Yeah, to the day he passed away, mate. Evil well, bastard. Yeah. No, I, like I said, I can, I can... I Obviously, I haven't been through what you've been through, but I can imagine living your life so long to a certain age and then, and then becoming an overnight... Uh, well, not overnight, a gradual sort of celebrity throughout the months it blew up. Yeah. Things like that you weren't used to dealing with. It's right, it's not about it's only about that. <laughs> I thought you were having a doobie. <laughs> I wish, I wish. I wouldn't be doing it on TV. I wouldn't be doing it on TV, anyway. Yeah, that's fair enough, mate. That's fair enough. It's fair enough. Like I said, Gordon, um, I might I might try and come down one weekend and you can take me to a game. Definitely, definitely. It'd be really, it'd be really good. So oh. listen, Gordon, um, I've kept you long enough. So and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you. Every person I interview, so when I've interviewed Ricky Hatton, when I've yeah. interviewed John Waite, do you remember John Waite, the 80s singer? Yeah. Yeah. I always ask everyone these 10 questions at the end. Uh, yeah. It just makes you work a little bit and uh, we find out a little bit about you on the spot. So, All right. All right. so 10 questions, quick fire answers. <clears throat> and your first question is, what is your favourite word? Money. What is your least favourite word? Worth. Worth? Work. Yeah, like working. Work. Oh, work. What turned you on? Wolfstown Football Club. <laughs> yes. What turned you off? Uh, Premier League football. What sound do you love? Uh, oh. The, uh, the whistle at the beginning of a football match. What sound do you hate? The whistle, uh, the whistle at the end of a football match is both down and off. Brilliant. What is your favourite curse word? The F word. Oh, fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? P- professional... Premier League footballer. Sunday League. I'm too old for that now. A Premier League footballer? No, semi professional footballer. All right, so you wouldn't want to go to the top. You'd like to stay at this, yeah. Stay with the French. Yeah. Um, What profession would you. I wouldn't mind the money of a Premier League footballer. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, your first answer was money. Um, Number nine, what profession would you not like to participate in? Boxing. Quite a sensible answer that for you, Gordon, isn't it? Um, but saying that, I might yeah. be doing a boxing match for a charity event in uh, Hull in November. Oh, fantastic! Oh, brilliant. Well, maybe we can do another interview for that one down the line. Yeah. Yeah. And number 10, Gordon, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say as you arrive at the pearly gates? Come in, son. Come in, son. I like it. I like it. Right, Gordon, I'm just going to finish the episode, but don't go because I'll have a chat with you after it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the fantastic uh, Gordon Hill lending us his time for a great show this afternoon, which I'm hoping you'll all enjoy. Gordon, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. I've had a good, I've had a good time. Thank you. Right, it's been a pleasure. Wicked. If you're enjoying these uh, shows, please subscribe to the channel, the Lancashire Lad podcast, and we will see you next time with a brand new episode. But for now, Gordon, look after yourself. Thank you so much and see you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. See you soon, mate.